is the wall the wrong way around, and because it does things differently than the plus equals, the minus equals, etc., etc. <coughs> so that it calls that out to say something is different here. And that is because we have a right side that doesn't necessarily do, I'm sorry, a left side of the operator that doesn't necessarily do what you expect. Uh, in the case of, for instance, uh, plus equals 2, um, x dot x mutates. In the case of dollar x dot y, dollar x mutates. In the case of pi equals, dollar x mutates. In the case of dollar x till equals slash foo, dollar x does not mutate. So that so that was a um, major design. That was one of the major ways to call that out. Instead, in Perl 6, we use the till prefix to the character. And all. So now, what we have, um, don't worry, we're not going to use any of these other operators, we're only focusing on the till till operator. But the rationale now behind Perl 6 is that the first character in these operators tells you the type of operators you're working with. For instance, uh, the carrot operator tells you that you're working with blue constructs, which is why we have true on the um, right hand side. The plus operator by match tells you that you're working with a number operator. You're working with a number. And likewise, the slash foo tells you that you're working with either a string or a real expression on the right hand side. So the operators have now been separate a little bit and made a little bit more rational so that you can go in and have a equals now. That falls the same fashion for um, let's see, equals or even plus or type operator. But that's a lot of talk about what to that's a lot of talk about one little operator. So let's delve into the core of the talk. Uh, the first uh, thing I want to point out, aside from my own model, um, is that util has a his own Perl 5 to Perl 6 version. If you want to, say, take your test weeks and convert those over to Perl 6. Um, I've done that myself with uh, my model, which unfortunately uh, I haven't renamed yet uh, Perl Modify, or on CPAN is known as Perl to Perl 6. Uh, I've taken Dancer 2 through the Dancer 2 conversion, I'm sorry, the Dancer 2 test suites through the converter. And after conversion, roughly 80% of, of the Dancer test pass. This is not to say that's for the Dancer 2 modules, it's just for the Dancer 2 tests. But it handles conversions, uh, so that, uh, it handles the equal to to till till, which gets a little bit confused because there's now obviously the dot till, the the dot operator has changed, the till whether the dot operator has now changed to till, the till operator has now been replaced with double till, the equals till has now been replaced with till till. So it's something that you probably don't want to do by hand. And if you look on on GitHub you'll see these two models out there to help, and hopefully there will be more coming up. So, let's start with attacking a fairly common expression. This is an ISO, um, was it 19601, I think, or 8601, if this will work for What we're going to do is parse this now in uh, Pro 6, and Pro, in a little bit Pro 5. <laughs> the way we used to do this uh, is was, is above uh, that backslash d plus dash backslash d plus etc. The first thing that you'll notice here is that the dashes are now backslash in Perl. This is a new consistency rule and makes things much simpler. If you have, say, a relative in Perl 5, one of the one of my personal problems with that is trying to 
match a bracket, match a closed bracket, match an open bracket, match a brace, because they'll have backslashes. Maybe, sometimes. <coughs> unless flow by a, unless they're received by a dollar sign. In which case you have more backslashes to um, to match that. Luckily the new kernel six rule is is much more consistent. If it is not an alphanumeric character, backslash or quote. I'll get into the code here for the scene. So that's one of the major changes that is made in Pearl 6. So this the next bit here is that Pearl 6 expressions effectively run with backslash X, with a slash X modifier. So you can use white space. Without Without uh, this route, without discovering your, your uh, current matches. So you can have white space in, you can have new lines, you can have whatever, that, have whatever you like, you can comments in there. Much, um, I believe that uh, Conway's book recommends um, forward slash MSX for all regular regular modifiers. That's what you effectively get now in Pearl 6. Or better, or worse. Cap frame, luckily, has not changed. You can use the factory square brackets to represent a non cap frame group, but we'll talk right now about spot cap frames. Uh, here, we're going to capture just the, um, just the um, date, <coughs> the time section, and the time zone. And again, hopefully everything here looks relatively familiar. Again, the dashes and colons have to be escaped. But that's again now a consistent rule. If you've ever worried about where to put backslash in your red expression, don't be worried. Again, the rule is now if it is a non alphanumeric character, you need a backslash. I'm not sure if that applies to um, in to say in your new rules. But that's, that's a different story. Now, uh, one, one thing that I found that is a real boom to at least my core boom is this. You would think that the, you would think that you ran this expression through Perl 6. Uh, now that everything is either an object or Everything is now an object. You would think that you would get a hash reference if you try to look at the output of a mesh. Like, like so. You, you, you think so. But luckily, we now get a nice, clean, we now get natural data instead of wasting time trying to go back to the previous statement and add in data number, add in dump parent. And it doesn't care of this, like we mentioned all that, or my personal favorite, use YAML, much shorter, and use YAML, and then say, use YAML, say, dump this thing. We get back an actual decent indented tree. The, uh, the funny square brackets, the funny square brackets around there are the, uh, Jap are the uh, Japanese quotation marks. Deliberately designed to be out deliberately, sorry, deliberately designed to be out of band characters. So that you don't miss so when you copy, you know, you get, you get you know, code immediately you just want to try to copy that somewhere. Um trying to point for it. And we have um, all your rate indexes all mounted marked out for you. Whereas before you used to say you used to have to use a half zero four dollars, zero dollar, one dollar, one dollar, two dollar, three. I just gave up the way this way. You now actually have a straightforward and simple array to, to work with a matching objects. Which does look a little bit more awkward when you look at in um your mob home. Because you end up this way, you actually get a lot more information, and but I, in this case, uh, cut out 
about uh, 15 lines worth of statements. But again, if you need to know the detail, if you need to drill down that far, then you should. Uh, you get, for instance, uh, the original string that you're matching, the match index, the start match, the end match. So if you're going for, say, the, uh, what is it, the time zone, you find a list over here with the time zone reference, and this starts at character 11 and goes to character 19. So you have a lot more detail and more depth as to what actually goes into this. Now, this means that you would say, you know, use, you use dollar one, dollar two, dollar three. Well, what, that's kind of more, at least in my opinion, in Pearl 5. And Pearl 6, luckily, dollar zero has now moved over to dollar star appropriate name. So dollar zero is now free to do what it should have done all along and be the zero of match. And that's great. And again, here, uh, date is. 2015-11-11. Uh, the time is 22.137, and the time zone is Zulu. So now it's a slight change, and again, luckily translators such as uh, Blue Tiger and um, Pro Modify do this for you. If you, if you want to go that way. There's also now a match object. So you have along with the old uh, dollar Z, along with the old dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, you have now an actual match object, which has a sensible name, uh, at least a sensible name you are. You are, ma you are matching strings. Your string matching operator is slash slash. So what's so a what's more sensible name for the match object than dollar slash? Straightforward, intuitive, and keep intuitive and keep things in order. Um, the odd, I'm not quite sure, someone has to explain to me, unfortunately, uh, why, uh, dollar, why dollar slash is in fact um, in this with the right here. But uh, dollar slash now, dollar slash bracket zero, is the first index of the match object. Which matches our date, 2015 11, 11. The second object is 22 or 21 December. So that's that's another way to match. You have the old dollar zero, you have the probably familiar dollar zero, dollar one, dollar two variables available. Or you can go even you can go a little bit more, you can go a little more around new style and you see double slash. Or uh, one feature that not, I haven't seen a lot of used in a while so far is the capturing uh, from Pro 5. Probably because it's just a little bit awkward to use. Luckily, Pro 6 clears it up for us quite a bit. You can now create a regex which matches your content. Uh, not slash D dash slash D plus slash D plus and captures the date portion, and instead of, oh, what is it, um, parent, question mark, uh, open, open angle bracket, something akin to that, to capture, to capture text. Now all you do is replace the string that you wanted to match from, let's see, all the way back here, the parent, <coughs> parent, the dash, slash D, dash, slash D, you replace that with an actual label, with an actual relative scene, um, easy to remember, as it's been called date. And inside there you use the uh, HTML-ish uh, angle graphics to, in, to insert your date expression. And down here, at the bottom, to view that, much like you have the dollar slash object, the dollar slash match object, it also is a hash, so you can view the hash functions. This is the other, this is another slight new piece of Perl C syntax. 
Uh, you probably know this actually as a hash key, but the point key brackets on, on both sides are now how you delimit a bare word. In the old, in old Pro 5 code, if you said dollar uh, x brace foo, close brace, that now has changed something in you know, Pro 6. It is now uh, percent x because of the new sigils. Open point bracket, foo, close point bracket. And any, basically anything inside, I believe the rule anything is that anything inside the open bracket, the close bracket, is now officially a variable. And I'm sure that people will. I'm sure that. So, that, so if you want to go all the way with our expression and break it down even further, we have the we have a date and time and time zone. And by the way, again, notice I failed to mention this beforehand, but notice as well that um, the expression that we have here, well, you actually guess the uh, quote 2015 has no white space. Yet our math expression has as much white space as we want. You can insert white space wherever you like to keep things clean and separate out different bits of expression or put them on new lines, put them wherever you like. Keep things separate and keep things, keep things clear. And I'm right now having a hard time flipping back and forth between Pro 5 and Pro 6 expressions in my mind. So I uh, would like to have write Pro 6 expressions and then be surprised why they don't run.
little break here before we move into the, into the uh, next uh, section. Um, this will build some of the content that we work that we want to have work, especially it will focus on the uh, my regex portion of this. Well, what we're going to do is take a take the regex and do something that regexes can't do, at least not without introducing more code. One of the problems that you uh, in computer science and teaching that people canonically talk about is how to do is how break expressions cannot handle matching braces or alternative another problem in computer science usually is that they can't count pairs of that they can't count pairs of A B A B A B in a break expression. Something that break expressions cannot do. But luckily for us what Perl 6 uses are not regular expressions, but parser expressions. And we'll start out here with, again in baby steps. And yeah, so I'll start with this uh, phrase here. We have a integer that we want to match in the screen. So the obvious thing there is to create a regex, call that an integer regex. Now, uh, in this case, we're not going to worry about sign, but you could add that later on. We're not going to worry about floating point types or sign with notation, because you can add those in later on. If you do so too. Now, if, if you're never going to start what we end up, what we were talking about, uh, the angle bracket integer is now how we match the, uh, is now, the is now a better and hopefully a clearer way to match those questions. So, so, so say, let's take a, say, oh, I don't know, a JavaScript-ish language. So we have 32 here, a integer, a one to add a variable, a. Well, one thing you do there is you can create a type for your, you can have a type for your integer. For the moment, we're going to throw away the A because it's actually a little bit more complex for where I'm headed. If you want to map this way, we can just deal with simple base integers. So, our so we're going to extend our expression, our expression, regular expression, it will Common expression to a to a sum to imagine the sum of these integers. Now the first thing you'll see is when you have the match object here is that we actually have something of a tree for me. That's what the indication on the side indicates how deeply we're nested into our real expressions. And those of you that know a little bit about parsing and compiling might recommend start to recognize it just a little bit. A tree being born from a set of expressions. <coughs> maybe, maybe just a touch familiar. For, for instance, um, integers here are just sync are just strings text with no white space. And more importantly, for our purposes, once you have once the Regular expression parser has gone through the three two to capture that regular expression. It no longer needs to backtrack. So what we're going to say there is that after we parse three two and how long many digits we have after that, we'll just call that a single token. As if you were saying parsing, oops, parsing, <clears throat> as if you were matching contents of a file. If you were say looking at a portion of an Apache log file, trying to match dates. If you're willing to have a portion of, say, JSON, trying to match a string. If you're willing to have, say, a, oh, I don't know, portion of a JavaScript program that was parsing. So, we have, so what we have here is a tree starting to work inside of our expressions. So 
if we were to say walk that free later on and we knew how to go in and look at say the expression inside that and look at the integer inside that and if we were to do some sort of manipulation with those two. So, say we want I, I made one other change there. Um, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I should point out this as well. Um, we have the token type here and the rule type. Uh, the only real difference I think, and I will have to correct myself later on, I'm not sure, is that uh, the rule is a little bit more flexible with how it the by space. That's the only real difference between the two types. So in this case, I, I didn't include white space in the example for reasonable clarity. But this way you include white space between the 32 and the plus and or say a new line, white space, new line, what have you. And that's really the only difference. But the important thing to focus on here is that we're looking instead of at a red expression that you would Why? Expression that you can match with dollar zero, dollar one, dollar two. You now have labels that you can refer to inside that match. So, for instance, if you want to, you could actually go into the dollar slash object, as we mentioned before, and open dollar slash angle bracket sum. I'm sorry, uh, I have an error in my slide. Dollar slash angle bracket sum angle bracket zero raise zero because there's no way right now to differentiate between these two images down here the expression and integer and integer down here because luckily for us they're inside an array so you can match it with dollar slash open bracket sum bracket zero to get three two and for star slash open bracket so, bracket one to match to scene. So you you can delve a little more deeply into your base structure that way. And it starts not looking so much like every instruction as something that you would see is say a parser or compiler that was going through and interpreting your data. A, a little bit more complex, a little more, sure, a little bit more complex, not that much. Again, you have the token that you can name, and you can use it anywhere in the round make a like. Oops. It went You have a sum that you, you know, a sum object that you, you can use elsewhere in your program, or in other programs, or say create a library. If you have a lot of these sort of operations like integer, plus integer, integer, times integer, you can name that as say a sum or product and put them into a library. We might call it an expression library. Other people might call it a parsing library. So this is where we get a little bit, just a little bit deeper into how what we used to have as just a set of regular expressions is now more of a parser or a pilot. So that what you can look at, so that what you start out with here, and what you end up with is a is basically something that you take and parse yourself. You take this and parse that and interpret that. So you have you, what was an expression here is now a bit of compatible code. One of the canonical things that you see a lot of times online is people that want to take, that want to use your brain expression engine uh, to say evaluate a string. It's not, not a common thing. If you have a lot of, you have a configuration file that you want to try to that someone has put an expression in that they want to match and interpret, well that's a little bit awkward in Perl 5. Because you have say uh, four, uh, four slash integer, then capture the then capture the plus sign, capture the multiplication sign, 
and then we them on in your code for the route. Okay, uh, dollar zero, dollar one is in here, dollar two is a multiplication sign, so you have to say if the sign is multiplication, then return dollar one plus dollar three. And move on from there. So, uh, so right, so right now, what we get is uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, no worry. Um, again, we have a little bit more of a uh, free going on here. They, they see. Um, Forty-two plus seven was our original expression, and we've now broken that down into, you know. Once we went here after the sum, uh, I deliberately hid a few things uh, back on this slide because Perl 6 gives you a lot of information, which is, again, great for trying to debug these problems. The more information that you have, the better. Um, and um, right now, if you take a look at, um, I'm going to do some work with uh, parsing, <laughs> of all things, uh, parsing a parser algorithm. What you get out of the uh, dump is wonderful compared to what you would used to get if you say try to do this with uh, an older model, say uh, parse uh, parse or MCG or parse percent, and trying to debug those in you know, profile it used to be a nightmare. Now it's all built into the language for you, and you have automatic tools that spit out easy to relatively easy to read data trees that you can view. So, it, so this is what it actually looks like on the interior, and we have the zero, we have the element zero here is our integer, first integer, and element one is seven, which is okay if you're just doing random, which is okay if you're just trying to match that. But if you want to say write an interpreter that will return the value thirty nine from that then it's kind of helpful to know what the right-hand side of the expression is, in our case, 3, 2, and, sorry, the right-hand side of the expression, which in our case is 7, and the left-hand side, which is 3, 2. It's helpful to know that sort of thing if, if, you're, if you are trying to write an interpreter. So, why you end up, so, this way you can view this way, you can tell apart the left-hand side and the right-hand side of that. So we create an alias now for our capture statement. So now we go in and say, so now we go in and be able to match dollar slash bracket LHS plus dollar slash bracket RHS. And know which one is the left and which one is the right without having the link. So now, well, we'll have to hurry up a little bit. Uh, the last bit of uh, what we're going to do is, as I've been kidding throughout, is we're going to create a very, very small interpreter for this expression with the goal that we can take 32 plus 7 and get the result 39. Effectively creating an interpreter for language inside Perl, inside a ramp. Which sounds, which I know sounds much like Inception, and I wish I had the Inception noise at this point, but I couldn't find out why. At least not at 3,000 feet. Didn't quite work out pretty well. So what we do is we add to our grammar, we add an action that tells the compiler whenever you run, whenever you process a sum, you do this. In your process of sum that has a left hand side and a right hand side inside that you do something. And what that looks like is this. This is your action here, your interpreter. So for say a sum, you can so say for a sum, you can return the sum of your left hand side and right hand side. The late statement there turns returns and abstract syntax, and it returns in a syntax tree. 
In our case, what we're doing is not occurring a tree, but the actual but the actual sum of, of two expressions. This shortcoming a lot of the current uh, profiles, shortcoming a lot of the old expressions. So now effectively, you can take this parameter and modify that later on to do at, at home to do additions, subtraction, multiplication, division, all the major operations, add in say variables to that mix, and you create your own create your own little language inside Perl 6, inside the parameter. Uh, the last thing I'll show you before I run out of time here is that this is, has a lot more Perl 6 code. And this is how, this is one simple way to write a very, very, very small assembler to me. Assembler to return your code. Of course, you don't really want to assemble such a simple structure that just, that just uh, simplifies in your front end to 390. But if you wanted to use replace, say, the the integers with variables, then you have a legitimate you have a legitimate um, use case for creating a for an instruction. So again, I as left, um, I will push. Um, I will have to mention, I should say, uh, that there's already the start of a project like this to do grant to do this sort of thing that we do for assemblers in the Perl six. Uh, this is again my own uh, my own project, and this is what I'm just now finishing up after programming. But what is there right now? Uh, is all the Ember programmers for uh, popular languages such as Go, such as JavaScript, such as C, which is kind of portable because it would be really nice to be able to generate native call expressions from Perl. So if you want to give it a try, then by all means go out to GitHub and once I got things, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, fixing in for uh, fixing in for the language changes to Perl. Uh, what you'll be able to do is take this tool, create a grammar for Go, and be able to parse Go inside Perl 6, and say return Perl 6 code. And what this does actually is place the Antler code and parses that into Perl 6, which is terribly amusing, uh, at least I think, because uh, the current Antler uh, code to generate backends uh, is roughly um, I think I measured uh, 25,000, possibly in excess of 75,000 lines of Java code to do what we do in Perl 6 with, um, I think, uh, 1,200 lines of Perl 6, and it's mostly the ramp. So, we, so this shortcuts all of what Antler does, replaces that with this, you know, replaces that with a generator for Perl 6. Thus, taking the entire front and what we are now well coming. I don't know if we have time for questions. I don't think so. Okay. All right, one point. Okay. Uh, one, anyone? Okay. <laughs> Do you have grammars? So you go start at some is left-hand side plus some and have a, a termination condition for Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, and in fact, the uh, Amber grammars that I use uh, in Perl Amber mobile on that fact, uh, grammars are recursive. And if you know anything about uh, if you know anything about grammars, then they are fully left recursive. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.